Welcome to the 4th Indian Executive Club Awards 2014. So let me now invite onto the stage Nalin Kohli, a man who is an influential leader and change agent in the new India. Nalin, we welcome you to Melbourne and hope this is the first of many visits and we're looking forward to hearing your perspectives and reflections on the India growth story. Thank you very much, Rohini. That was uh, embarrassing to say the least. It's not easy to hear about oneself. In politics, the only things we hear about oneself is after you leave the room and it's very rarely anything good. So to hear good things in such an overdose is a new experience by itself. However, I do also, my full name actually is Nalin Satyakam Kohli. So Nalin actually is the lotus flower. Originally, actually the stem of the lotus flower. So it's not the one that blossoms up there, the beautiful part of it, but the one that probably carries through the mud and makes it possible there. Satyakam is one who speaks the truth. Now that's the where the problem begins. <laughs> I'm in politics and I'm a lawyer. <laughs> so it makes my path rather arduous. However, and I'm happy to say, I do really dislike to speak lies. And uh, I have over the years learned that one can prefer silence than speaking an untruth. So uh, there are two corrections, if uh, Rohini, you will permit me to make to that rather long introduction. One is I'm certainly not the chief architect of that election. It is Prime Minister Narendra Modi. We haven't seen a phenomenon like that for a long time. I've seen politics for a long time, for my limited age that I... I gather I'm very young in Australia, so it's a pleasure to know that. I don't take it that way, but uh, yes, it's really Prime Minister Modi as a charismatic journey, and a journey which I'll refer to in a few minutes. And secondly, the real people who made it possible are the voters of India. To have a vote which is so historic, it's not been explored, but India and Australia do have commonalities and I'm sure will be engaging on a host of bilateral, regional, and certainly multilateral issues. So therefore, my appeal would be to everyone in this room, go back, think about it. A year from now, India is going to be a destination where a lot of billions of dollars of investment will flow. You'll see it happen in a year. And how do I say that with such confidence? I'll share a few things with you, and that's where I want to talk about a small story of what one single program has been done to show you that the government of Prime Minister Modi in Delhi backs up its words with action. It does what it says. And I'm going to talk about a scheme called the Pradhan Mantri Jan Dhan Yojana. Pradhan Mantri, for those who don't understand English, is Prime Minister. Jan Dhan is people's money. Yojana is program. India has approximately 70 to 100 million families that do not have access to banking. They are excluded from the formal banking structure. In the 70s, when banks were nationalized, one of the stated objectives was to bring more and more people from rural, disadvantaged groups into the banking structure. So banks were nationalized. We have one of the banks here, ANZ, so it'll be an interesting experience for you to know the scale of what banking operations have been in the last few months. So the Prime Minister, early on when he came into office, he was sworn in only on the 26th of May this year. One of the first priorities, he says, is can we look at ensuring one bank account per family where there are no bank accounts? The banks went ahead, the government perked itself up and said, let's try to do it. After doing the due diligence and planning for it, on the 15th of August, which is our National Independence Day, the Prime Minister announced it publicly and said, we are launching this scheme and we would like to open accounts. And as an incentive, with every person who opens the account, we will give a free accident insurance policy of 100,000 rupees. That's equivalent to approximately 2,000 Australian dollars. On 28th, the scheme was launched. On day one, 
15 million accounts were opened. That's not small. 15 million accident insurance ski, uh, ski, uh, policies were distributed. They are both world records. I'm sure they're going to feature as world, world records. In less than three months, would anyone whom I've not shared the story with like to hazard a guess how many accounts could have been opened? Anyone? Someone from the banking sector, maybe? Yes, yeah, someone's got the figure right. So either you've heard it before or you're following the news very well in India. Thank you very much. 70 million accounts have been opened so far. These are marginal people, people who have deposited one the equivalent of one Australian dollar, two Australian dollar, 10 Australian dollars, at the most maybe 40 Australian dollars. And these 70 million accounts have deposited collectively over a billion Australian dollars into their bank accounts. Now, this also shows the government announced something and followed it up with action. So when Make in India is being spoken about, when Skill India is being spoken about, these will be realities. These will be realities also for another reason. Globally, dollars need to find, or pounds, or yen, or whatever the other currencies, marks, they need to find a destination for attractive investment. India is looking up again. We are among the largest emerging economies. I don't want to discuss the comparatives with other economies, but we certainly are seeming even more uh, investable today. Japan has committed, when Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister Abe met, $35 billion. In the last 15 days, a billion dollars is about to come in. A special desk is also being set up in the Prime Minister's office for the Indo-Japanese thing. China is speaking about $20 billion. So I think India will see an expansion of economic activity because it's through economic growth we need to reach out to the most marginalized people in our country. India is a land of disparity. We have challenges, enormous gaps between the best and the least earning people in our country. And the government of India is clear in its mandate that while we are seeking to raise and rise up to the aspirations of every Indian and make them part of the economic story so that they can unleash their aspirations. This vote was a vote for aspirations. At the same time, we acknowledge, and the Prime Minister always says, we do have to bear in mind that every marginalized person has no option but the government to depend on for education, for health, housing, and sometimes even employment. So India out there recognizes its social commitments, but at the same time recognizes that by bringing in ease of business, we can expand and contribute globally bring in our share of expanding it for global well-being, India's well-being, in terms of the investment that comes in, a benefit for those. And my request would be to everyone here, part of the non-resident Indian and the persons of Indian origin community, that please do be this bridge and try to see how you can marry these two countries into a firmer economic relationship. I'll end with something that over the years I've learned the hard way. Also, it's probably out of interest. You know, all of us are spiritual in our own ways. This is also a land of spirituality. It's heartening to note that every time someone, whether it was at the Yara Council, whether it was today evening, respects and remembers and recalls the ancestors. Back home, we also recall our ancestors, though not so publicly. And what I've learned over the year, years is, learned to appreciate, there's something called the middle path. Gautam the Buddha used to speak about the middle path. For a large part of my life, almost three-fourths of it, I often saw the middle path as a path of compromise. A path where in business, in life, in relationship, in politics, everywhere, you compromised to arrive at a solution. It's in the last few years that I've changed my view and come to realize the middle path or that point, the middle point, is not a point of harmony. It's not a point of conflict. It's not a point of compromise. It's actually a point of harmony. A point where from the both extremes, my truth and your truth can become our truth. And our truth means it's a point of justice, a point where we respect each other 
And we do not feel that your truth is greater than my truth or my truth has become greater than your truth. And the Indian community in Australia can help both the truths, the truth of India and the truth of Australia to become our truth. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the national spokesperson of the BJP, Mr. Nalan Kohli. Thank you very much, Nalanji, for sharing your thoughts, views, and of course the aspirations to bind these two countries together to a stronger relationship.